my name is Theo van der um, I'm the founding director of TVNA Consulting Engineers. Uh, we started the company in 2005 as a small concern, and over the years we've grown, and uh, we we found that we have a knack for uh, exploring new technology. Um, Daryl is one of our very capable engineers. Um, he seems to be very interested in uh, exploring technology and so on. And uh, he's basically introduced us to um, the drone technology and we explored it together and you know, we keep on exploring and finding smarter ways of working with it. Yeah, uh, as Theo said, I'm Daryl, I'm an engineer in the company. Uh, just with drones, so I first came across them when I was a contractor on site and uh, I started looking at you know, drone usage just for the purpose of taking pictures of site progress, monitoring what was going on, also to have a bit of material controls because every Friday you'd have to walk around with a camera and take a million pictures all over the site and then you come back on Monday and basically check everything's there. There's also legal aspects where you can't fly too far away from yourself and you always need line of sight but for whatever reason if you have interference from other antennas or you've lost connection for whatever reason the drone itself has built-in technology that it will return home automatically. So you can completely lose signal, you can lose GPS holds on the drone it will always fly back and land off and land where it took off from. Okay, so at all points up to on, on some of the newer drones you have a seven kilometer full HD feed onto your screen, onto either a phone or an iPad. And I'll give you a quick demo. Let me just do I mean it's so smart, it takes off itself, it lands itself. You can set up GPS coordinates for it to fly to. I'm gonna do a quick auto takeoff. The legs are going to lift up on their own. So, that's it. It's because of the GPS, it's going to hold this position. So, even if the wind blows, it's going to blow it away and it will automatically return to where it has to go to. So, so I'm going to have a look Two very interesting cases recently. One was of a quite a severe slope failure. Um, it was part of a uh, slope stabilization project where we fortunately flew the drone at the onset of the project and then a failure happened. We weren't part of that. Uh, uh, but the insurance company then asked us to fly the site again afterwards to see what the extent of the failure was and we were able to not only show them the footage of the before and after but we were also able to generate a 3D model of that and we were able to, to superimpose the two on top of each other so that you can see the extent of the failure and the volume of material that, uh, that failed and the precise plane and so on. I believe that they would not be able to have come to the conclusion that they did without the the modeling and the footage and sound that we were able to provide. Uh, we are also busy with a project now for one of the government departments uh, where we have to refurbish roofs and the, the buildings have got very complex roofs at different levels and so on, completely inaccessible unless you bring very expensive equipment, like scaffolding and cherry pickers and the like to be able to get onto those roofs. And we were able to, to fly it. Uh, we took video footage, fly all the way around so that we can look closely at areas that you otherwise wouldn't be able to, to access. And we also modeled up the roofs in 3D so that we can, area, we can measure areas, perimeters, heights and everything very accurately from that. Um, and we're using that as part of the information pack that goes into the tender documentation, uh, uh, which I don't believe we would be able to do otherwise in any other form.
This drone is it is not the entry level. It's sort of a mid range. Uh, entry level machines start probably around about the 25, 28 thousand rand mark, uh, but they they are more for recreational use. This machine in particular has got two controllers. Um, so one operator can fly the drone, especially in confined areas and so on where you need to pay close attention to where you're flying, while the other operator can then pan the camera and take video footage or photos um, to make sure that you, you get the information that, that, uh, that you need it. So it's a, because of the dual operation it's a bit more expensive. This machine run about 90,000 rand now. Uh, and then you get bigger machines, got eight bladed uh, machines uh, that can carry more load, meaning the, the battery life, they can carry bigger, heavier batteries, uh, bigger cameras and so on, um, and as a result of that they can fly further and they can fly longer. Um, I can't venture the price on those because it's not really in, in our field of interest, but I can imagine that it can be up to a couple of hundred thousand rand for those machines. Okay, so this is basically a flyover of, of what the, the initial step in the, in the processing phase is, or the data collection phase. So what you see here is a couple of hundred images captured from the drone, and it's on a calculated program grid at a set altitude. And because of this, the, the software is able to take the, the pictures, combined with the altitude and combined with the GPS coordinates and it stitches a model together based on those two things. So that's just extracted from the software with the photos in place, basically a flyover and then I'll show you a video what the, the actual output looks like. This is the same video without the cameras. So that's a 3D model you can see I've just cut off the sides. And I mean, you show this to people and they say, no, come on, that's a video you took with the drone. But it's not. This is the, the workable kind of accuracy you get.